Alright. <clears throat> so we're playing Druid. First pick. Uh, this one is between Wailing Soul and Imp Master. So you want a solid curve. You don't really have that big of a problem with pings as Druid, since you have uh, Swipe and you also have uh, your Hero Power as well. So the Imp Master is a little bit weaker. Plus you get that class uh, 3 drop that's very good. The Druid the Flame. So here I'm going to go with the Wailing Soul. I think... Uh, just a solid four will come in handy, and the three drop is less uh, less good in Druid. Uh, Loot Hoarder, I'll take it over these two. Not much to say. I think it's a pretty easy pick. Uh, same thing with the Tinker Town. Generally, you don't really pick up things like uh, Wild Growth unless you have a deck uh, tailored to it, like a deck that's really heavy on your four and five slot. So Tinker Town th there is uh, fine as a solid three. Keeper of the Grove is one of the best Druid cards in the game. And one of the best cards in the game, period. So we'll take that there. Haunted Creeper, one of the best two drops in the game. Easy pick. Keep the Grove, Sludge Belcher, Mech Bear Cat. These are all really good. Um, between the three, I would say Keeper of the Grove is better than all three. But we already have one. And also we have one four drop here. And we have a lot of cards that are uh, kind of centered in the early game. And not so much in the late game. So here I'm actually uh, considering Mech Bear Cat. But at the same time, you kind of want like mid-game taunts as Druid, because usually your lose condition is uh, is you getting rushed down. So having that mid-game Sludge Belcher can really uh, um, just like stop uh, aggro. But I think here Keeper of the Grove does something similar, but on turn four instead. So just like removing uh, a very aggressive start. Take the Keeper of the Grove here. I think you can go with either one of those three there. Um, Boulder Fist Ogre, I'll take it over Scarlet just to fill up our little ga late game a little bit more. And once again, three drops are um, less good since Dru we have Drew to the Flame, and Drew the Flame is uh, definitely a top pick. <laughs> Savage Roar, Mark of the Wild. So we have two, two, fours, pretty weak body. I think uh, picking up a Mark of the Wild would benefit us. Plus, we have Haunted Creeper, which is a very sticky minion. That would probably uh, allow us to activate our Mark in the Wild, so it's never going to be a, like a dead card in our hand. And we have a lot of ways to regain the board with a Double Keeper. We'll try it out. That also makes Savage Roar better as well. Uh, the Haunted Creeper does, since it sticks on the board, so it's like a guaranteed target for Savage Roar. But uh, I just prefer the Mark. Um, Starfire is pretty pretty easy there. Murloc War Leader over these two. There's not really much to say. Those giants are terrible cards. So, Blood Cell versus Iron Bark. Currently, we have two two drops, two three drops, three fours, and two late game cards. I think here Iron Bark is fine, just because we lack late game. But I think as a first pick, I would probably take the Blood Cell over Iron Bark. I never really want to make my Druid decks too heavy. And taking a lot of things like Iron Barks and not having like a, a solid early and mid game to complement the Iron Barks kind of just ends up with you losing if they have hard removal and you may be having a chance if they don't. Because you never really get like really effective trades, especially if you're playing against like a, a stronger opponent, they'll set up for your turn 8 Iron Bark to uh, trade with it pretty uh, pretty easily. Pretty easy Sengen here, better than those two. Same thing with the Harvest Golem. Once again, the Innervate, much better if you have a really heavy 4-5 four, five, uh, four, five slot. This deck is not that, we don't even have a single 5-drop. Five, five Storm and Champion, easy pick. <clears throat> so how sticky is our deck? I look at the Savage Roar and I see a Harvest Golem, Haunted Creeper. I don't think that's quite enough. Acolyte of Pain is kind of slow. And we really don't have that much synergy with Acolyte of Pain. We have Mark of the Wild, which you could buff up. And that is a pretty good combo. <laughs> Same with the Storm and Champion with Acolyte. I think it's close between these two. But I think picking too many, uh, like... Uh, situational cards like Savage Roar has been uh, it's been my problem lately. I'll take the uh, Acolyte of Pain here. Less situational, less impact, buff up our uh, late game a little bit more. Uh, easy Trog here. So we have one, two, four, five. Five, four drops and two, two drops. We could use another five drop because we only have Tiger, but I think I'm going to hold out for maybe like a Drew the Claw. Plus, I think making sure your 2 3 4 curve looks something like 6 2 drops and like 4 3 drops and 5 4 drops, that is a lot more important than worrying about like where your late game is located. Because we have a lot of cards 
that are like six plus. We have four um, halfway through our draft. That's a lot more than you need uh, halfway through. So take Mech Warper. Pretty easy Wrath. Easy Argent Commander. A lot of these picks are just straightforward. Hmm. I'm glad these two cards came up uh, right next to each other. So Hungry Dragon, usually like it'll spawn like a 2-1. Um, on turn 4, if you think about like uh, the 2-1, you're not really getting a benefit for this being a 5-6. Because once it trades, it's a 5-4, right? Imagine you're trading with a 2-1. But not only that, but you give your opponent the chance to use things like Power of Whelming, Blessing of Kings, Cold Blood, just like have some kind of counterplay with it. And if they have like something, something like Hex or uh, Fireball or Polymorph, then you just gave them a 2-1 for free. Uh, and those are all things that they could also use on the Lost Toss Rider. So, take the Toss Rider. Bomb Lover, pretty easy pick here. Um, best card out of three, plus we could use something for our five slot. Don't really worry about my five slot too much. I think if I end up with like two, three minions, preferably three, depending on how much uh, other late game you have, but um, usually three is good. Swipe, swipe. I like this swipe. Usually swipe is really strong on six, and swipe works really well on druid because you get druid of the claws on five, so not only are you stalling on turn uh, five, you're stalling into a swipe turn six, which is turn six swipe your power, which gives you a lot of good trades with the taunt backing you up. So, I mean, I don't have to tell you guys that Drew the uh, swipe is good, but just something to think about. Like, something to think about why swipe is so good. BGH, Ancient Allure. We have three, four, five, six, seven. Seven late game cards. Three, five, six, four drops. I think we're good on fours and late game. We have three, four, three drops, two, three, two drops. So I think this uh, deck's problem is more than anything just tempo. Um, we have more late game than you know most decks will have. We have a good number of sixes, quality sixes, and also a good good amount of late game. Here we could actually consider taking the BGH because Ancient Lore might end up being a little bit greedy. Like just being able to drop this on three or get tempo back on a future turn by taking out something bigger um, could be very valuable. Much more than, you know, a couple cards. Maybe we can gain a couple like mana crystals, right? It's something to consider. And I think I think uh, I'm gonna go that route. Generally, you want to do more with less. So, like, the less beefy minions you have, and the better you trade your like board control for uh, value, is 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 what tends to do good in arena. Instead of like just giving your cards up for free in trades, like one for ones, and then just refilling your hand with card draw, it's a very inefficient uh, cycling of cards through the board. Pretty easy to uh, power of the wild pick. Power of the wild is really good. Same with that Wrath, easy pick. Here, Drew the Claw or Amani. We have three, two drops, four, two drops. Four, two drops, two, three, four, five, six, seven. <sighs> Mike Reed wants to take Drew the Claw because it's a lot better of a card than Amani, but Amani is not bad. It's one of the best two drops in the game. Um, and we definitely need twos. And if I think that we're, our lose condition is most likely to be the fact that we get rushed down, then maybe we should take uh, take the Amani to be safe. We also have like different like weird activators. Keeper of the Groves double as like uh, Dark Iron Dwarves on on Amani to trade up for like Yetis. You know, ping the Amani. I also have double Wrath. I think it's a smart choice. I think this is one of the drafts where if we drafted this deck backwards, like started on pick thirty as our pick one and then went back, it would look like a completely different deck because we definitely would have taken that Drew the Claw and also the Ancient Lore. <laughs> Nourish versus Illuminator. I think uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have a, no a good number of threes and twos now. I think since we weren't greedy with the uh, Ancient Lore pick and the Drew the Claw pick and we curve lower, I think we could take the Nourish here. Not really too happy about Nourish, but just buffs up our late game. We don't really need it, but it's better than these two. It'll do a lot more for our late game in very slow matches than Illuminator will do for when we're getting rushed down. 
in my opinion, especially since we have so many things that deal to like Keeper of the Grove is deal to twice, once with the battle cry and once with the body. And then we have a bunch of two drops, you know, Drew the Flame is a 2-5 often in this deck. So, not bad. We have, uh, we ended up with four, five, six, seven, eight Laken cards with the Nourish, which is super, super heavy. Uh, so we don't have to worry about, uh, like, control versus control matchups. We have four, five, six, four drops, which is the perfect amount, and a good mix of four drops as well. Uh, three fives, five fours, and also, uh, you know, utility four drops. Uh, three fives, six, three drops. Uh, good mix of three drops as well. Probably our, like, our weaker slot is our three slot, just because of Murloc Warleader and, uh, Tinker Town. But we also have a little bit of synergy with the Tinker Town with the Mech Warper and, uh, Harvest Golem. And on two, we have three, four, five, two drops and double wrath to uh, supplement the early game. Damn, it feels good. To looks, be like a, looks like a pretty decent deck. Organic Chicken, thank you for the resub. Welcome back. Can I get some sub hype in the chat for Organic Chicken? Thank you, bro. Yeah, that's pretty much our deck. I'm going to guess that this deck will go maybe like eight, nine, just because like some of the card quality in this deck is like a little bit low. Things like Nourish and Iron Bark and Lost Hall Strider and uh, even Loot Order and Murloc Will Leader. Not the best, but honestly, no, no really bad cards. I'll say that it'll go nine wins.